what are roles and responsibilities of DBAs and apps DBAs in Oracle Cloud. This is a topic I'm going to cover in today's episode. We help you in your journey to Oracle Cloud and transition you from a beginner to expert on Oracle Cloud. Now, before I tell you about roles and responsibilities of DBAs in Oracle Cloud, first, if you have not yet watched what are the different database options in Oracle Public Cloud, then have a look at my previous episode 34, where I covered different database options in Oracle Public Cloud. We looked at user managed databases. We also looked at the autonomous databases. Within those different database types, that's manual, automated, and autonomous, who is responsible for what? We looked at different type of databases, that's virtual machine database, bare metal DBCS, or database cloud service, Exadata cloud service, or Exadata cloud at customer, and autonomous databases. So have a look at k20academy.com forward slash 34. So the first thing you as a senior cloud DBA or an architect will be doing is designing and deciding where to deploy these databases. So if you look in the diagram, first thing you will be deciding is what kind of a database you want to deploy on cloud. Is it autonomous database or automated, which also called as user managed database or a database on compute, which doesn't have the database cloud service or cloud tooling. So once you decide on the database type, then you will decide how you're going to configure high availability. Do you want a rack? Do you want data guard? And within data guard, do you want to deploy this data guard within an availability domain or across availability domain within a region or across a different region? Then you will also be writing the high level design, low level designs and things like what kind of a CPU memory shape you want to assign to these databases. So the first and the most important thing for senior DBAs and architects is designing and deploying. You should also have knowledge of a region, availability domain and fault domain in order to design your database on cloud. Now, I've done the previous episodes on this topic, region, availability domain and fault domain. So I'll put it in show notes and I'll share a link as well here on how you can learn more about region, availability domain, fault domain. So the first thing is about design and deployment. So once you have designed your database on cloud, the next task is the provisioning of databases and this will be typically done by the junior dba or can also be done by a senior dba so provision is basically you creating the databases on the cloud so you should have the knowledge of prerequisite in order to set up the database depending on whether you are setting up an autonomous database or you are setting a user managed or automated databases or you are doing simply deploying the database on compute so make sure you have the familiarity with prerequisite like setting up the network connectivity. So when you're provisioning the database, you should be familiar with things like different additions. There are four different types of additions in Oracle Public Cloud. So you should be familiar with additions. You should be familiar with whether you want a grid infrastructure or logical volume, depending on what kind of a database it is. You also should be familiar with SSH keys and other options that you get whether it's autonomous database or Exadata cloud service or virtual machine or bare metal database services. Once you have provisioned the database, you should know how to validate it. You should have a thorough understanding of checking these services in Oracle Public Cloud. So the third thing you should be familiar with is connectivity. And there are different ways to connect from on-premise to cloud. Things like VPN connect and fast connect. So you should be familiar with VPN connect or fast connect and which option for you to pick. And then if it's the autonomous databases, you should be familiar with client credentials. How do you download them and how do you make connectivity from either using your SQL developer or any other client tool or directly from the database client tools. Now with that, you should also have familiarity with networking. So things like network security group and the security list, which are kind of a firewall in Oracle public cloud. So once you have the network or connectivity uh, understanding, then the other responsibility of DBAs are administration. That's a main functionality. So you'll be looking at things like performance tuning using the performance hub or service console in autonomous databases. You'll be doing scale up or scale down of services, which means scaling up the CPU disk space or memory. You'll be creating clones. You'll be doing access control. You'll be setting up, resetting the passwords. And so these are all some of the admin tasks that will be performing. Other tasks related to the administration may be the adding the SSH keys 
or terminating the databases or start stop of the database or start stop of the machine or the Linux machine on which you are running the databases. So remember on episode 34, I mentioned about different type of databases. So in user managed databases or automated databases like VMDB, the bare metal databases and Exadata cloud service, you have an option to start and stop services including you have full access on the operating system. So you can even shut down the machines or restart services. As a part of administrator, you'll be also setting up the data guard or standby databases on Oracle Cloud. You'll be looking at the service console, how your machine is performing or the database services are performing. If you're working on Exadata or autonomous databases, you'll also be setting up the resource management rules, like how much CPU and IOs to assign to a specific database on that machine. Then after administration, fifth thing you should be doing is patching. Yes, you'll be applying patches on Oracle's automated databases. So you'll not be applying the patches on autonomous databases, but automated or user managed databases like VMDBCS or bare metal database cloud service or Exadata cloud service, you'll be applying patches and not on one place, but multiple places. So you'll be patching the database patches. So the Oracle database on cloud runs on top of grid infrastructure. So you'll be applying the patches on grid infrastructure homes as well. Then you'll be applying the cloud tooling patches with the tools like command line interface like DBCLI or DBAS CLI in case of Exadata cloud service. You'll also be patching the operating system. You as a cloud administrator will have full access on the Linux machine or machines on which the databases run. So you'll also have to take care of operating system patches. So once your patches are done, the sixth task will be backup and restore. So Oracle provide you all the necessary tools to backup the databases on cloud, but you have to configure the backup scenarios. So you'll be scheduling things like when the backup can happen, how long you need to retain the backups for, what time the backup should run. So you'll be configuring backups and most importantly then, You'll also be doing on-demand backup just before some, for example, you're doing a big activity for patching purpose. Then make yourself familiarize with how do you restore the databases? You can do point in time recovery or you can do full recovery as you do in on-premise. So the next task is about security. So security is one of the most important thing in my view, apart from lift and shift. So all the cloud vendors work on a shared security model where some responsibility lies with the cloud vendor like Oracle, while for other operations, it's customer's responsibility. So make sure you're familiar with your responsibility. So things like network configuration, setting up identity and access management like compartment and policies, making sure you have the right firewall uh, set up like in the sense of security list or network security. You should also be hardening your operating system on which your databases are run. So about identity and access management, I've done a previous episode on compartment and policies. I'll share the show notes on the blog where you're watching this video. Now, whatever the security features come with on-premise that are also applicable on the cloud as well. Now, with respect to security, Oracle in this open world in 2019 announced three new services for security. One is a data safe that's already available for you to use in your Oracle public cloud. But the two other new features which are coming is maximum security zone and cloud guard. So if you're part of my DBA to cloud DBA training, then we are going to add these new features, data safe and cloud guard and maximum security zone in the training program. So the next batch will be starting on 30th of November. So in that batch, we are going to add these new security features in Oracle public cloud. So if you're part of my trainings, then you're going to enjoy this new feature related to security in Oracle Cloud. Now, once the security is done, the eighth and the most important point in my view, which will make earn you a lot of money is migration or lift and shift, which is the process of migrating your databases from on-premise to cloud. And depending on the type of databases you have on the source, and the destination or type of databases you want to go on the cloud, like user managed database or autonomous databases. Oracle provide you a lot of features or a lot of options for you, like ZDM, which is zero downtime migration, 
or MV to ADB, which they move to ADB or autonomous databases or using SQL developer or using data pump, RMAN, plug and unplug or remote cloning. So various database migration options. And so depending on whether you want a physical migration or a logical migration, online migration, offline migration or size of the database, you should be familiar with migration scenarios. Also, you should be familiar with that. Also, the data transfer service with that Oracle provide you two data transfer services. If you have a huge amount of data, which is data transfer disk and data transfer appliances. We are helping a lot of our customers on migrating their big applications as well as databases. So lift and shift in my view is very, very important for you to learn and understand. So all the eight tasks that I've explained so far are the mainly the responsibilities of cloud DBAs. And if you are a apps DBA working on e-business suite, people soft, JD Edward, then you have some few more additional responsibilities. So you will be doing those eight tasks, but you will also be doing an additional responsibility, which is managing your e applications like e-business suite or people soft on cloud. And for that, you have a cloud manager, which is a graphical user interface to build, manage and migrate applications on cloud. So this cloud manager tool, you will be deploying the cloud manager tools. You will be then using it to provision your applications onto the cloud. This EBS cloud manager tool, you will be also using to migrate or lift and shift your e-business suite from applications from on-premise to cloud or cloning other environments. And it also has a lot of other features like setting up your, the load balancers, adding the additional nodes, and there are a lot of new features coming for this deployment. Also, you should be familiar with how to deploy these applications like eBusiness Suite or PeopleSoft or JD Edward on cloud. So the familiarity of OCI concepts are very, very important for you as an apps DBA. So just to do a, a recap, as a senior cloud DBA or an architect, you should be first designing and deploying the databases on Oracle Public Cloud. Then the second task is to provision the databases. Then the third task is to make yourself familiar with the connectivity and knowledge of VPN connect or fast connect. Then the fourth task is about administration that includes performance tuning, the scale up, scale down, the other administration tasks like setting up the data guard or configuring SSH keys, terminating the databases or configuring the hybrid DR. You should also be familiar with the performance tuning or resource management. Then fifth task is patching and patching not just the database or grid, but also the cloud tooling as well as operating system patches. Then sixth is about backup and restore or using the manual method or automated configured databases as well as on-demand backup and restore of those databases. Seventh is about security, uh, which has a shared responsibility model. And then the new features like a data safe, cloud guard and maximum security zone. The eighth in my view, most important one is migration and lift and shift. You should be familiar with all the tools, different options, depending on the database source type and destination data type. And the ninth for apps DBA is working on e-business suite or PeopleSoft to be familiarity with deploying those business applications on Oracle cloud, lift and shift, and the most important, the tool cloud manager, which could be an EBS cloud manager or PeopleSoft cloud manager. Well, that's all about roles and responsibilities of DBAs and apps DBAs on a high level in Oracle cloud. And trust me, it's all doable and possible. And you can learn all this very, very quickly. I have done this. Hundreds of our students in our training program have done it. So you can do it too. So, so guys, this was our expert, Mr. Atul from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you have any doubts, then we have something really, really special for you. We have our free class on how you can transition from Oracle DBA to cloud. And, and in this class, we'll be discussing about why must Oracle DBAs learn cloud and what to focus first and many other different topics that will be very helpful for you. And if you want to register for the same, then you just have to log on to k21academy.com 1101093022. And if you liked our video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.